Jacko, g'day. Um, what do you expect from this second game, having experienced what you saw and played against uh, in the first game and also understanding a little bit where Lebanon's at with World Cup qualifying? They, uh, they need some results pretty soon. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Obviously, we haven't had a window um, like this where we've played two competitive games in, against the same op opposition in a short space of time. So, of course, we're going to be interested to see how they come out for the second game. We know they are in need of a result. Um, but, you know, from doesn't really change much from our approach. We're ready for whatever comes our way. If they come with, you know, a bit more pressure, play a little bit higher, or, you know, if it's a similar approach, you know, it doesn't change too much about the way we play and our principles. So, um, but I expect, obviously, there'll be a lot of intensity in the game, um, especially with what's at stake for them. One thing that will be different is uh, you haven't played too many Socceroos games in recent times without Keanu Bacchus next to you. Mm -hmm. um, are you looking forward to, to what Arnie's got planned uh, in terms of the midfield mix in, in his absence? Because he's a pretty big miss with um, what a big contributor he's been to the national team recently. Yeah, he brings a lot and he's been brilliant for us over the last 12 months. And, um, but, you know, it's just another challenge for us. Um, of course, you know, missing Riley and Bozzi and, um, you know, there's every game there's different challenges thrown our way in terms of personnel or, um, you know, what, whatever that means. But uh, we have enough experience and enough depth and quality within this group to to um, you know, find ways to, to combat that. But yeah, of course, we'll, we'll miss Keanu. He's been a great player for us uh, of recent times. Well, Jackson, I mean, you play a number of roles at St. Pauli as well across that midfield. Could we maybe see you in a different role tomorrow? I think for us, it's, you know, because as I say, our midfielders have got good flexibility um, across, the, across the board, you know, with myself, Aiden, Connor, we've all kind of played in deeper and more advanced roles. We're all pretty versatile, so um, we've got a number of players who are capable of, and of course you've got young Patrick and, and Nizzy here as well. So we've got plenty of players who are capable of, you know, adapting into those different midfield positions within the group. With Connor, your teammate at St. Pauli, he's only he's one of only three players that have played every minute of every World Cup qualifier those, thus far this campaign. What, what have you made of his growth since he joined you in Germany? Yeah, it's been incredible to watch um, his development over the last 18 months. Um, I think he would say himself, you know, he got a bit of a shock when he when he first arrived in Germany, you know, 18 months ago. Um, but to see the player um, he's developed into, it's been great to be a part of that progress. And it's been a huge factor of why we're having success at our club as well. I think um, he's played he's played in, in every game since, you know, the, our change of management about uh, just over a year ago as well. And huge factor in why we've been successful. So and he's, he's another one, you know, he's versatile, can do a number of jobs and um, yeah, he's he's just going to get better and better. Uh, Jackson, you've uh, had a chance to have a run out on the pitch there. Uh, what did you make about out the field and the Canberra facilities here? Yeah, it's great. Um, obviously, it's been a beautiful couple of days here as well, which is always nice and um, energy is good amongst the group. The boys are all feeling good and, um, yeah, it was nice to get out. You know, normally we only get the day before the game on the pitch, but to have two days on the field to prepare for the game will get us really used to, to what we'll expect uh, tomorrow night. You obviously had a big crowd in, in Sydney, but also another big crowd expected here as well. Um, how good is it, I guess, to move out of those, you know, major, major centres of Sydney, Brisbane, Melbourne, and come out to, you know, a bit further out to put on a show for the fans out here? Yeah, I think from what I've read, it's going to be, you know, one of the biggest crowds um, for football here in Canberra, which is for us super exciting. We know that, um, it's uh, as you say, we don't get an opportunity to play it. Five years ago was the last time we were here, and um, I know there'll be a lot of people really excited to to see a great performance from us and for us for us as well. We want to give them that lift as well. You know, people coming out and um, supporting us in that way. So we want to put on a good show for them. And lastly, the playing style, I guess, of you guys. There's been a few promises from your teammates for more goals in this game. Um, how is that? How are you going to achieve that? Yeah, I think we just need to be more clinical, um, a little bit more decisive in our actions in the final third. I think we got it ourselves in some really good areas and created a number of, you know, really good opportunities where maybe just one pass or, um, you know, one touch away from being in a really clear goal scoring position. So um, for us, it's just about tidying up small details. We don't ever really change too much around the principles of the way we play, tweaks in formation, tweaks in personnel. Um, but, you know, we've got to go out there as, and produce as players as well and, and produce those moments that lead to goals and winning games. Jackson, there's talk of bringing an A-League men franchise here to Canberra. There's talk about the Newcastle Jets with ownership as well, the relationship the A-League has 
with its fans, different ownership models. You play in Germany, which is a very entrenched culture of fan supports and how clubs are run. In your experiences in Germany, what are some of the lessons you think the A-League could learn here in Canberra and around the country? Yes, tough to say. Um, of course, Germany is unique in a lot of ways with the um, the fan participation in not only the way you know the clubs are, are run and dis in, in decision-making processes. That's I'm not sure if there's too many other places in the world where um, those things are so deeply connected. But for me, that's been something that has really built the connection between fan base, players, people who who run the footballing side of things. There's such an open communication between all of them in terms of where they see, where fans want to see their club go, where they don't want to see it go. Um, and, you know, in terms of finding that balance between on-field success and, you know, staying true to what, you know, the people who, you know, make these club make football clubs run, which is which are fans. So, um, yeah, I think for me, being a part, like, even as players at, at our club, you know, we all attend the general meeting every year in the beginning just, you know, as a something to be amongst the members and board members and everything. It's, it's something totally different that I've obviously never experienced before. And um, I would say that's probably what builds that really strong base for, for teams in, in Germany anyway. <clears throat> All good, thank you. Well done, Jacko. Cool. Uh, Arnie, well, we peppered Jackson with questions about what the lineup's going to look like. Ask you as well as the coach. We got two players guaranteed out injured, another one out suspended. What sort of rotation should we expect tomorrow? Yeah, look, I think uh, there will be probably four to five. Uh, fresh, fresh legs start. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's an important game still. Uh, numerically, we're, we still got to yeah, obviously win this game to get through. So uh, it's important that we go out there with the, uh, the focus and the mentality, but most of all the energy in front of a, a full house to uh, put on a great performance. I need to ask you, I know you pay close attention to it. After the results of the past match day, Australia is now third ranked side in Asia because they overtook South Korea. For you as the coach, how important is that for Australia to maintain heading into not just the rest of World Cup qualifying, but touch wood, a World Cup as well? Yeah, look, uh, it's a motivation and the goals I'm driving to the players. It's uh, it's all about, uh, you know, obviously getting in pot one. If we, uh, at this moment, we're in pot one. Win the next three games, we stay in pot one. And then uh, it helps our World Cup draw enormously. And if that was... That was <laughs> Probably the main messaging I was driving at the Asian Cup to the boys, and that's probably why the, you know, that that <clears throat> that result there hurt. But uh, you know, the main thing is, is the boys, uh, you know, they they go out there tomorrow night and put in a great performance. Uh, looking back at the review of the game, there were some sloppy moments from us, and I've, I've uh, addressed the boys about that individually, about you know, uh, no sloppy moments and, and tidying that up and putting in a, a more polished performance. Arnie, the Lebanon coach was in here before. We were asking him about Paddy Yazbek, who seems like he's a good chance to get some minutes tomorrow night. Uh, the coach said, uh, you know, he thought Patrick was better off uh, being a leader in the Lebanese team because he obviously got approached to play for them mm. rather than sitting on the bench for Australia. Um, what do you make of that? And what were your conversations with, with Paddy like about his allegiance? I imagine it wasn't too difficult a decision for him. No, nah, but, uh, you know, he's Australian. First and foremost, and it's the blood, is in, in the heart and the passion. Obviously, his uh, mum and dad and everything's from Lebanon, and, uh, and he's got that in him as well. But uh, <clears throat> look, he's a fantastic kid. Um, you know, he's uh, he will more than ninety percent get uh, match minutes tomorrow night, and uh, and make his debut against Lebanon. I think it's a great thing for him and his family that they'll never forget. Also, playing against uh, you know his nation. Arnie, um, you talked about turning to the 4-4-2 because of a lack of fit and available wingers. Is that something that you're looking to, you know, keep going, not just for this match coming up tomorrow, but using it as an alternate option, you know, long into the future? Yeah, look, I think, uh, you know, because, uh, again, you, you, you're selecting different players all the time and, and for different reasons, and it's about playing the players to their strengths. And, uh, you know, at the moment uh, we're short for wingers and... Uh, you know, it's, uh, we're playing lopsided and, and, and making sure that uh, we're getting, <coughs> as Jackson said, principles and everything don't change. It's just, uh, you know, again, playing players to their strengths and making sure that uh, we're, we're 
we're really structured well and, and uh, obviously put in that, that uh, effort and performance. You selected, you know, six strikers for this camp. It's mm. obviously a bit of a focus for you. Uh, you know, are you a bit concerned that it's been five or six games now where a striker hasn't scored? No, look, I think uh, it's it's down to everyone to score as well, you know. But, um, yeah, I'm giving players a chance and I think that's what we've got to do, you know. As I said, it's, uh, you know, I've... I've outlaid the, the future and, and, you know, in 2025, 26 and, you know, some older players that might not make that and I've got to have a plan B and uh, that plan B is, is, is making sure that uh, we've got some young ones in as well to learn from the senior ones <clears throat> but also it's important every game these are World Cup qualifiers and, uh, you know, having those uh, senior boys around to get us one step at a time and see how far they can go so I'm not writing anyone off, it's, it's more about Get, having more more choices. You talked about you know four or five changes for tomorrow. If if you do win tomorrow, the next two games, you know, you've already assured qualification to the next stage of World Cup mm. uh, qualifiers. Uh, will you use that then potentially as an opportunity to to really ring the changes and really you know mm. look for more depth? I can I can do that, but uh, as I said, as the question Vince asked me before, what's important is we win all th these three games, and that's my. Uh, <clears throat> biggest thing at the moment is obviously staying ahead of South Korea. Um, they've got a tough game uh, tomorrow night against Thailand away. Um, and, you know, as I said, it's it's important that we win these three games. Uh, Graham, you've obviously won a fair amount of matches in this qualification period. Um, won the last one. But as you've admitted, they're maybe a bit sloppy in the last match. Um, you're in this position where you cop a lot of heat. Do you feel that pressure sometimes and how do you react to that? Is there a positive to take that people are passionate or can it sometimes be quite hot? Nah, it's, uh, I don't read anything. Of the, you know, I don't do social media and that, so I don't even know what they're saying. And my uh, focus is the players and, uh, and getting the job done for the nation. And uh, <clears throat> you know, Don't forget I coach Sydney FC in the A-League uh, so the West Sydney Wanderers fans probably don't like me too much, or the Melbourne Victory fans. So, but uh, I don't care. Seriously, it's um, it's part of it's part of football. It's part of coaching. Is uh, you know, coaching can be a, a, a tough gig, but at the same time, you've got to enjoy it, and, and that's what I'm that's what I'm doing. Um, you've spoken in the past about a home of football. Um, I think maybe other cities might have been flagged. Um, why not Canberra? Yeah, look, I think I've said enough about the home of football. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I've said enough. So it's uh, more of the focus on the game tomorrow night and uh, I'll leave that to the people, other people to get it done. Arnie, um, Cassini Yangi um, is certainly not afraid of expectation. He's a pretty confident kid. He can see that in the way he plays as well. What, what do you like about him and... You know, is he one of the strikers who you're looking at really to, to sort of lead this generation that you're bringing through the Socceroos? Yeah, look, I think uh, Cass is doing exceptionally well. And, um, you know, he's got the speed, he's got the strength, he's got a 1v1 action. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I'm very, very happy with him. And, uh, you know, the more I do believe, the more experience you give him, the more chances you give him, the better he'll get. Um, and also... The Oli Roos are in action at the moment as well in the the WAF Championships. They're in the final against South Korea. Are you watching those games as well with Vidian? Have you seen any performances in that that are maybe giving you thoughts about the next window as well? Anybody ready to make the jump? Yeah, look, Joey, I'd, I have to be honest. At the moment, I haven't watched them, the games. Now I'm focused on, obviously, us and the Lebanon games and, and the boys that are here. But uh, it's good to see they're in the final. And uh, <clears throat> But I will be watching them when I get back home. Um, there was a very successful model back in the day at the AIS here, Kuehl, Viduka, the list goes on and on and on. Do you think there'd be any value on bringing something like that back for football in Australia? It's actually nice to be back here and see it's still there. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I, uh, even uh, when I had the Olympic team, we came back to the AIS, but it was more of a school excursion type uh, f uh, centre, not a sports centre anymore. Coach, uh, you will face again, Australia will face again Lebanon in five days. Uh, even if Lebanon lost 2-0, but uh, players and the team uh, are more confident uh, now, what do you expect for the second uh, game? And do you expect changes in Lebanon team? Yeah, look, I think, um, you know, they, they brought something to, obviously, the game that uh, 
they would probably go away confident with. But it's uh, it's it's all about us. It's all about our performance and and you know us getting it right and better. But uh, you know we do know that uh, <coughs> clearly that Lebanon need to probably win three games, the last three games. Otherwise they won't qualify. So you know um, that can also it can put pressure on them as well, knowing that that situation and and knowing that uh, they've got to win every game.